Good morning, I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. Welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. We're on a three-year journey through the entirety of God's Word. From beginning to end, we're doing Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs. The Old Testament book we're in right now is 1 Samuel. The New Testament book is the Gospel of Mark. We're dabbling in the Psalms and Proverbs, all spread out over three years to cover the whole of the Bible, one chapter at a time. And today we come to an imper- important turning point in the book of First and Second Samuel. First and Second Samuel largely focuses on David. And so this is where we really bring David into the picture in chapter 16. And from here in chapter 16 through the end of Second Samuel, the rest of these books are largely going to focus on David. So let's pray and ask the Lord's help as we turn our attention to this very important figure in the history of God's people. Father in heaven, you are so good. You're so good to give us your word and your spirit. You're so good to teach us and lead us in the way we should go. We ask, Father, that you would be with us and that you would lead us, Father, to honor you with our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, and where is my head? 1 Samuel, (laughs) chapter 16. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul, since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me him whom I declare to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains the youngest. But behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him. For we will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now, the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and a harmful spirit from the Lord tormented him. And Saul's servants said to him, Behold, now a harmful spirit from God is tormenting you. 
Let our Lord now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful in playing the lyre. And when the harmful spirit from God is upon you, he will play it, and you will be well. So Saul said to his servants, Provide for me a man who can play well and bring him to me. One of the young men answered, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, a man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a man of good presence, and the Lord is with him. Therefore Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me David, your son, who is with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey laden with bread and a skin of wine and a young goat and sent them by David to his son Saul. By David his son to Saul. And David came to Saul and entered his service. And Saul loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, let David remain in my service, for he has found favor in my sight. And whenever the harmful spirit from God was upon Saul, David took the lyre and played it with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the harmful spirit departed from him. That's 1 Samuel chapter 16. Now, what's interesting about this passage is we see now clearly Saul was a king according to human standards. What did the people want? We want a king like all the nations around us. And so God gave them a king that would fit the bill according to human standards. He was so tall, head and shoulders above everyone else, very handsome, very strong. By outward appearance, he had it all. But he was insecure and he feared man and he was unfaithful to the Lord. But now listen to the different language that God uses here. He says, How long will you grieve over Saul, since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn and go. I will send to you Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. God says, I've provided him for myself, a king from among his sons. And he says, I'll show you what to do. You shall anoint for him, for me, him whom I declare to you. So God's chosen him, God's made him, God's going to declare it. And so when Samuel gets there, he sees the sons of Jesse. He's got to come up with a way of doing this thing without getting the attention of Saul because Saul is now hardening his heart against the Lord and is, is turning into a bitter man, as we'll see when we pick up the story. I mean, he's troubled by evil spirits even here in this chapter. He's definitely taken a very, very dark turn in his life since the Lord has rejected him and since he's chosen the fear of man over the fear of the Lord. But here, he's got to come up with the sacrifice as sort of a uh, smokescreen for <laughs> why he's really there. But he sees Eliab and he says, man, this guy, he's tall. And he's handsome. So it's interesting. For me personally, I'm very tall. I mean, most of you know that. You go to the church. If you don't go to the church and you, all you see is me on the screen, I'm, I'm a tall guy. I'm like 6'6". Six, six. And uh, so it's always been interesting to me that the only person in Scripture who's known to be remarkably taller than everyone else and chosen for his position because of his height was Saul, who was unfaithful. And even here... The only one of the sons of Jesse uh, that we have any commentary about the height of his stature is Eliab, the eldest, who is not a man after God's own heart for sure, and is not God's chosen. So, so much for that. But on the other hand, I'm also the youngest in my family, uh, birth order. I'm the fourth out of four kids, and so there's something in my heart that likes the fact that it's the youngest one who is so overlooked that he's out watching the sheep that gets chosen. But really, it's not about appearance. It's not about birth order. It's not about any human qualification. It's about the fact that God has made David to be the king that he chooses because he wants a man after his own heart, which is what he told Saul through the prophet Samuel. And so this is what we have in David. By the Spirit of God, by the sovereign choice of God, by the grace of God, David is made to be the anointed king over Israel. And now we have this next passage which confuses 
us a little bit when we just read these straight through because uh, in a couple of days we're going to come to uh, 1 Samuel 17 and as we come to 1 Samuel 17 we'll see David fight Goliath and when we read that boy it sure is going to read like David has not been in the service of King Saul and he's chosen from Basically, watching the sheep, he comes to visit his brothers and to bring them food in the battle. And then he's elevated from watching the sheep to being the champion who fights against Goliath. But here, before we get to that, we have David in service to Saul as one who's skillful in playing the lyre and who's known to Saul, who is um, loved by Saul, who becomes Saul's armor bearer. And so we might think, well, two days from now, when we're in chapter 17, we're going to be in, in a couple of Psalms tomorrow, but two days from now, when we're in chapter 17, we'll think, wait a minute, Saul doesn't appear to know who this is, this David, son of Jesse from Bethlehem. But how is that possible if he's been in very close service to the king as the musician whose music soothes Saul's spirit and who whom Saul loves greatly and who becomes his armor bearer. Well, I think what we have here is this last part of chapter 16 is a summary statement of the years of service that David gave to Saul before he was entrusted with command of troops in battle. So there was a period of time when David was still relatively young but during that time, he is in service to King Saul. And this is a summary of that service. Now, exactly when his battle with Goliath happens, if it's before any of this service starts, or if it's right when he's first been sent for a couple of times to play music, but Saul doesn't really know him yet, because at first, he's not really given his name. It's just said uh, in verse 18, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, right? Or it could be that the David and Goliath battle happens first, and then he's brought in. But I think, I think what happens here is probably just a, a topical arrangement of the material. And probably my best understanding of this is that David sent for, without Saul really knowing his name or knowing him well, he plays for Saul a couple of times, but then he goes back home, and then he comes in and he fights Goliath, and then he continues uh, in, in service to Saul after that. Uh, so I don't think necessarily the David and Goliath battle comes after years of service, uh, but I don't think it comes before there's any kind of service either. So that, that's my best guess at the order of things. But one of the things we have to keep in mind is that sometimes scripture isn't necessarily always presenting things to us in a strictly chronological way, especially when it's making general statements and it's not giving us a specific time reference. We don't know. When did the spirit of the Lord depart from Saul and a harmful spirit from the Lord torment him? When did he send for David? We don't know. We're not given a specific time reference. And this certainly reads like summary material. But I think what's interesting here is that David has the Spirit of the Lord. This is, I think, why this is put in this order. In 13, David receives the Spirit of the Lord. He rushes upon David from that day forward, and the Spirit of the Lord departs from Saul, and a harmful spirit comes. And we see that even in their interactions where Saul is tormented psychologically and spiritually because he's so guilty and shameful and just torn apart with conflicted feelings and David is so filled with the Holy Spirit that he's able to sing praises to God you know write psalms and and be someone who ministers grace even to Saul who is tormented so David is chosen prepared by God chosen by God meets God's qualifications and then serves God's purposes. Where do we see Christ in this? Well, of course, we see Christ as the greater son of David. The, part of the reason, the reason why David is chosen, because from his line is going to come the greater son of David, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is filled with the Spirit from his baptism 
to do the work of ministry that God has set him apart to do as the Christ, as the anointed one. And he, in the power of the Holy Spirit, there's a contrast here between David and Saul that we could also see between Jesus and King Herod. And the fact that Herod is, is troubled and is a man of addictions and a man of conflicted life and sin. And Jesus is such a stark contrast to that as a man after God's own heart who loves his father and who is full of the Spirit and who ministers God's grace to those around him. So we do see pictures of Christ here. And what's the application for us? The application for us, I think, on a very simple level, there's a couple of things. One is, don't judge according to human standards. Don't be impressed by the things that the world's impressed by. It's not the number of letters after a person's name, the number of degrees they have, the number of years they spent studying in school. It's not the amount of salary a person earns. It's not the size and the, and, the, and the niceness of the home they live in. None of those things are what really matters. What matters is having a heart for the Lord, being filled with the Spirit of God, and being used for God's purposes in this life. And that's something that anyone can receive from God by his grace and for his glory. Well, let's pray and thank God for this section and ask him to help us live it out. Father, thank you so much for your choice of King David. Thank you that you don't look at us the way the world looks at us, but that you see our hearts and that you change our hearts so that when you look at our hearts, you see your son, Jesus Christ, who is our redeemer, who has purified us with his blood and who has given us his righteousness. We thank you for this greater son of David who is the one who fulfills all of your purposes for us. Help us to live today by faith, not by sight, following your spirit and not judging by what our eyes can see. Help us to walk in humility and faith and love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me for 1 Samuel 16. Tomorrow we're going to be in the Psalms, uh, Psalms 55 and 56, I believe. Looking forward to that, and then we'll jump back into 1 Samuel 17 the day after tomorrow. Have a blessed day in the Lord.